make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Well, good morning, Oakwood. And and, uh, glad that you're here this morning as we begin a new series today called Finding Your Way. Finding Your Way. And as the fall comes upon us, we're going to take to the trails and we're going to figure out how do we get there from here? Because that's really the question that we are wanting to know in life. One of the deepest questions we want to know is how, how, how do we get there from where we're at now? How do we get there from here? And today's message is entitled Hitting the Trail, because that's what we're going to do this morning. We're going to hit the trail. Now, before we go any further, I just want to say just a baseline statement that I, I believe there's two ways for you to live your life, okay? You can either live a wasted life, or you can live a wise life. And it's all up to you. It's totally 100% your choice. And in the next few weeks, you're, we're going to go on this journey, this spiritual journey, and we're going to take to the trails of life together, and we're going to learn about how do we get there from here from a man in the Old Testament named David. Now, pop quiz this morning, okay? This isn't for a grade, but it is a pop quiz, so I want your participation. How many of you ever heard of David from the Old Testament? Old Testament David, raise your hand high. If you heard from David, okay, very good. All right, how many of you ever heard of David and Goliath? Heard of David and Goliath, raise your hand. All right, very good. How many of you ever heard of King David? Heard of King David from the Old Testament? All right. How many of you ever heard of David and Jonathan? Stories of David and Jonathan, the friends from the Old Testament? All right. How many of you ever heard of David and Bathsheba? David and Bathsheba, story of David and Bathsheba. Okay, very good. All of those stories are about the same guy named David. And for some of you that raised your hand on all four of those, you're going, whoa. So if you think about it, there's this kid that has such a ginormous faith that he takes out the giant of the Philistines. I mean, this guy was the warrior, okay? And not a warrior princess, okay? He was a warrior. He would kill anyone. He was huge. And little David has big faith and takes him out. Same David that we read later is sleeping with another man's wife and committing adultery. And not only that, but is going to schedule it so that the husband of that woman would be killed so he could have him have her for himself same david same david that is the king of israel that has wonderful stories of companionship with him and jonathan yes it's all about the same guy david as we go through this series we're going to Look through the book of Psalms. If you have your Bible this morning, I invite you to turn there to Psalm chapter 71. We're also going to look at one verse, uh, actually a part of a verse out of Psalm chapter 16. But we're going to be in the book of Psalms for the next several weeks. Something interesting about the book of Psalms that you may not know is that David, same David, David Bathsheba David, David and Goliath David, King David David, same David wrote about half, about 50% of the book of Psalms. And in the book of Psalms, we see a pattern. We see a trail of life that David blazed himself. And it seems as though as we go through the book of Psalms, he's leaving markers on this trail so that we could follow his path and so that we could finish well, and even for some of us, finish better than what he did. Now, here's the interesting thing as we read this over the next several weeks and we look at a bunch of different Psalms, okay? It seems like David goes out and he lives his life. And we get these stories of David and Goliath and King David. And and then there's other stories. You know, those are just the the big ones. But there's other stories about Nathan rebuking David. There's there's stories about Saul chasing David. Saul was the king before David, was jealous of David, goes chasing David, trying to kill David, hunt him down, track him down all over the kingdom. I mean, there's lots of stories there. But it seems like David goes out, he lives this adventure, and then he comes back and he writes about it. And that's what we get here in the book of Psalms. These are almost the, the, this is what happened, and now that I have time to reflect on what happened, here's what happened. We're going to read some Psalms that are Psalms of repentance, where he's crying out to God. There's there's, uh, Psalms of David in the book of Psalms where it seems like David is shaking his fist at God, and he's frustrated with God. There's times in the Psalms where David is just crying out to God, and there's times in the Psalms where you read about David, 
And all he's doing is he's simply bowing and he's worshiping an awesome and big God. But all through it, we see patterns, we see direction, and we see a trail, a path to life. And through studying these together, we're going to see how do we get there from here through the life of David. Now, before we go any further this morning, there's something that, that I believe that you need to know about trails, okay? First of all, there's, there's three parts to every tra trail, okay? The first part is the past, okay? If you're walking down a trail in life and, and you stop and you look behind you, you can see where you've come from. A lot of people refer to this as the back trail. You can look at your back trail and see where you've been and see some of the things you've been through. The second part of every trail is the present. It's where I'm at right now. This is where I'm at right now today. And you look at the environment around you, you can look at the, the things around you, the people around you. What is around you right now is your present situation. And sometimes we choose our present situation, sometimes we don't choose our present situation. But that is the present. But then the third part to the trail, we've got the past, we've got the present, but there's also the future. And that is the trail that lies ahead of you. That's the trail that goes off into the distance, and you don't know exactly always where it's going to go. You don't necessarily know, you know, is it going to turn to the left, is it going to turn to the right, but you're on this trail, and you're looking ahead. And hopefully through this series, we're going to look at the life of David, and we're going to find these markers along the trail, the, these, these, these principles that David leaves us that says, hey, live your life this way. And you will be blessed in all that you do. It's amazing because in the book of Psalms, in chapter 71, David kind of takes a minute here and he kind of does the past, present, future thing. Uh, let's read this together. Psalm uh, 71, we're going to read verses 5 through 7, and then verse 9 and 18 and 20. And they'll be on the screens for you to follow along as well. This is what it says. This is David writing. He says, For you have been my hope, sovereign Lord. My confidence since my youth. From birth I have relied on you. You brought me forth from my mother's womb. I will ever praise you. I have become a sign to many. You are my strong refuge. Do not cast me away when I am old. Do not forsake me when my strength is gone. Even when I am old and gray, do not forsake me, my God. Though you have made me see troubles, many and bitter, you will restore my life again. See, in this, these few verses here in Psalm 71, David looks over at the, the past, he looks at the back trail, and he sees all the marks of the goodness and the grace and the care of God through his lifetime. He remembers back to the time when he was a boy, and he was, he was a shepherd, and that was his job. That's all he did was, was shepherd sheep, and he remembers tending to his father's flocks, and he remembers seeing the hand of God intervene, whether it be that he was fighting a bear, or maybe he was fighting a, a lion, or maybe there's some other kind of, kind of predator coming at him and coming at his sheep. And he remembers those times. And he can remember back to David and Goliath. As he looks over the past, it is apparent that God has sustained him. And his heart swells with gratitude. The Psalms chapter 71, most people believe that this is somewhere in the middle of his life. And maybe just on the back side of the middle of David's life. As we get to the present, we see there in verse 7 that he says, I have become a sign to many. You are my strong refuge. Because of his greatness, because of what he's known for, because all that he has accomplished with God's help, that he has become a sign to many, and he calls God his refuge and his strength. Yes, truly, David was a marvel to many. But he's not a kid anymore. He's a full-fledged adult, and he's got tremendous responsibilities. He's not in charge of a bunch of sheep anymore. He's in charge of a bunch of people, a whole kingdom of people. And they're no ordinary group. It's the nation of Israel, God's chosen people. And he calls God, there in verse 7, his refuge, because he knows he'll only sustain himself with the help of God. And as we read on here in Psalm 71, and we get to verses 9 and 18 and, and 20, we see David looking down the road to his future, and he realizes, I'm not in Little League anymore. I mean, I've got grandkids that play in Little League, and I go and watch them now. And he feels like life is beginning to rush by. And as he gets on the other side of midlife, he looks to his future, 
And what does he see? He sees old age coming. He talks about his hair turning gray. And maybe it's really began to creep up on him. His hand-eye coordination isn't the same as it once was. And the energy that used to surge through his body doesn't surge the way it once did. And like it or not, he's coming to the end of a trail someday. And he humbly asks God to be faithful to him at the end as much as God was faithful to him at the beginning of his journey. You see, we're all on a trail in life, and someday we're all going to get to the end. We don't know what dangers lie ahead. Sometimes on the trail of life, they're long, monotonous miles, and other stretches, they'll keep us on our toes with anticipation of the future. There are going to be valleys of challenges. There's going to be crisis that threaten our very existence on earth. But there will also be sights of beauty and times of refreshing and joyfulness that only the Lord can bring us from Himself. But the most important thing that we need to realize is that we choose the way we go. We walk in the ways of the Lord and we pay attention or we don't. And we go our own way. We need to pay attention to those who have gone before us, those who have learned, because we can look at their lives and learn from their mistakes and learn from their victories. There's many in the Bible, many characters in the Bible. We can look at their lives and and, and see their trail and see their path, and we can navigate our way with the help of them. That's what the Psalms of David, I think, are really all about. If you read every single one of them, you would see a pathway to eternal life. I think that's why God gave us these Psalms of David in his word, because he wants us to know the way. In Psalm chapter 16, verse 11, it says this, make known to me the path of life. This is David talking here, make, you make known to me the path of life. I mean, isn't that good news for us? You make known to me the path of life. He's saying, God, you make known to me the path. You know which which trail that I need to choose. And you're going to make it known to me. You're not going to hide it. It's not like God is secret and and you don't really know what he wants you to do. And then all of a sudden he's going to just show up and caught you. You know, you're not going my way now. No, he makes it really obvious. He, He exposes himself all throughout the Bible. We know exactly what he thinks. We know exactly what he does. We know exactly what he is about. We know exactly who he is. We know exactly what he wants us to do. The fact is that we've got to choose to walk in it. There seems to be parts of highs and lows to every Christian walk. We walk in his ways and we are blessed. We choose to go our own way, the way of sin, and it seems like there's more consequences, more choices that don't line up with God's choices, and so there's chaos. We we all have something in common, though. And it doesn't really matter if you're on a good trail right now or if you're on a bad trail right now. The quality and direction of our life is influenced by the trail of life that we choose. The quality and direction of your life is directly influenced by the trail of life that you choose. Which really brings us to another point, another question. If you don't like the quality and the direction of your life, what are you going to do about it to change it? Because I have some good news for you this morning. As long as you're still breathing right now, it's not too late. It's not too late to get on the right path that leads to righteousness and peace and joy in the Lord. You can choose Christ, God's Son. You can make Him Savior and King and Lord and Master of your life. And you can jump trails right now from the one that you're on to the one that God desires you to be on. You know, many of you have made choices. Many of you have been victim of your choices. Sometimes you're a victim of other people's choices and their sinful patterns. I know that there's some of you that that you've been on a path, if you're on a trail, and if you're looking at your back trail, you see that behind you is a divorce. You're like, whoa, wait a minute. How did I get here? When I married and I took those vows, I meant it for life. And now look at my life. Look what's happening to me. Look what's happening to my family, to my kids. 
Maybe, maybe that, that hurt and that pain has put you on a pathway of negativity and you, you find out, I just don't feel the same about life as I once did. It's just, I'm just really negative. It's time to look ahead to a different way to go, a different trail, a trail of healing, a trail of peace. For some of you, dis- dishonesty is what you got, got you to your present situation. You are dishonest. You have character issues. You're a pathological liar. And you see the path that has got you on, but it's not too late to jump trails. For some of you, it's pursuit of worldly things. <laughs> you've been pursuing it and pursuing it and pursuing it, and you've always said, if I just had a little what? If I just had a little more. If I just had a little more. If I just had a little more money. If I just had a little more money, then I could do this and this. And then, then what? Then I'd be happy. Then I'd be fulfilled. Then I'd be going where I want to go in life if I just had a little more. If you look at your back trail in life and you look at your present and you look at your future, it's all surrounded by the pursuit of worldly things. And as you get more, as maybe some of us have done in life, you find out it never satisfies. You're never going to have enough when all you ever want is more. And that constant need for more is driving you far away from where you need to be with the Lord. It's time to find another path. It's time to find another way. Some of you are heading down a trail of immoral behavior. You didn't didn't plan it that way. It was like, hey, I'm going to go out and commit immorality. Let's do that. Let's do some immoral behavior. Let's find some people to do immoral behavior with. And let's 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 do it together. And you know, most people they don't they don't they're not that way. You just got kind of sucked into it. I mean, the devil is a liar, the Bible says. The devil is the great tempter. And he puts temptation out in front of you, and he makes what's bad seem like good for a minute or a moment or a season. And then you walk down that way, and then you're like, wait a second. That is not in the way that I thought that it was going to end. And the devil's like, exactly. (laughs) That's what I'm about. Maybe you have gone down that path of immorality. It's time to choose a new trail. For some of you, it's substance abuse. It didn't start out as substance abuse. It started out as substance use. You're just using the substances, and now it's substance abuse, and now it's out of control, and you've lost your grip, and you know you're on a path right now. You know you're on a trail that's leading nowhere good. It seems like you've lost your way. And all of these trails lead to what? What are they going to lead to in the end? They lead to pain. They lead to destruction. They lead to spiritual and emotional death. And sometimes they will even lead you to physical death. But it's your choice. You choose to navigate the trail that you're on your way. We all have that choice. I mean, Jesus talked about this in the New Testament, too. It's not just in Psalms, not just David. I mean, Jesus talked about this, didn't he? Matthew chapter 7, verses 13, 14, Sermon on the Mount. Toward the end, Jesus is teaching. This is what Jesus says. He says, enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate. And broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate, and narrow is the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. It's a scary scripture, isn't it? I mean, Jesus just comes out and says that the trails are different, and one is wide, and everybody finds the wide trail. And it seems like you're going on the wide trail for a while, and hey, man, this is easy. This is where it's at. This is more fun. This, this, is, this is great. But in the end, it leads to what? It leads to death. It leads to destruction. It leads to pain. It leads to sorrow. It leads to sadness. It leads to depression. It leads to spiritual and emotional and sometimes even physical death. But many people find it. Most available trail here on earth. Go it your own way. It's your way right away. Go down that trail. And then there's that narrow trail that Jesus talks about. And if his references are true here, then he says that only a few are going to find it. But it's the most fulfilling, life-changing, awesome trail to be on in life. It's the trail that leads to heaven. It's a trail that leads to a relationship with Jesus Christ that doesn't last just here and now, but it lasts forever. 
And it's your choice. You and I, we get to choose which way we're going to go. We get to choose which path, which trail we're going to be on. We've got to remember this. The quality and direction of our life is influenced by the trail of life that we choose. And I think if sometimes we're really honest and we're looking back and we're saying, man, I have some regrets here. I have some things I've done in the past that I I wish I hadn't done. I wish I could change some things. I wish I could go a different way. I think this truth plays out in our lives then. Direct and protect so you don't have regret. Direct and protect so you don't have regret. If you'll just direct and protect yourself and allow God's direction and His protection to come into your life and to do the same, that you don't have regrets in life. You don't like the quality and direction of your life, then change it. As long as you're still breathing, you have the power to make that change. But I'm here to tell you this morning, it doesn't just happen through osmosis. It doesn't just happen. It just happens by chance. If you just show up to church someday, just, it'll just intersect you and, and change your life. No, sometimes we've got to make choices. We've got to make these decisions with our heart and our mind. And part of that, especially for those of us that were already believers, are choosing this path and directing and protecting ourselves by walking in the ways of the Lord. Ultimately, it comes down to this. You choose God's way or your way. And it's really simple. As we go through this series, we're going to see David's life. And it really comes down to this truth. There are some times as we go through this series that we're going to read these psalms and we're going to read these reactions and we're going to read these, these pouring out of, of David's heart psalms. We're going to read these together and we're going to see that David chose his own way today. He chose his own way and here are the consequences. And hopefully we can learn from those and save ourselves some pain. There's also... Times we're going to see David chose God's way, and we're going to see the blessing, and we're going to see the joy. And we're going to read these things, and we're going to say, I want that in my life. That is what I want. That's what I intended my life to be. How did I get here in my present place on this trail? We're going to learn how to work through that, to learn to change our direction, to learn to go God's way. Because some of you, if you're being honest this morning, you have those areas of your life that need change. Some of you are in financial ruin. I mean, let's just be honest. You've been terrible with your finances. You have not spent your money. You have not honored God. And you're, and you're, up, to, you're, you're up to your eyeballs in debt. And it just feels like you're suffocating. You're drowning. You're living paycheck to paycheck. And you've got to realize at some point, I need to change the trail of mine. I need to go God's way in the area of my finances. For some of you, it's relationships. That seems to be like the number one big thing with people's relationships. It doesn't matter if it's if a marriage relationship, maybe it's a friendship, maybe it's a dating relationship that could be a, a, a marriage someday. But we've got to constantly work on changing the pattern of relating in those relationships. These relationships are not that are not characterized by kindness and love. They're characterized by selfishness and what you can give me and what I can get out of it. And then when it doesn't work out, whoop, I'm on the next person. That's how our culture works. Maybe that's a trail that you felt like I've been a part of or I've been on or I've been a victim to. And then some of us, it's just, it's just our moral behavior. It's our moral compass is so far off. And we've got to change it back to walking in the ways of the Lord. Because the truth is, truth is, most people don't plan to mess up their lives. They just don't plan not to. Most people don't plan to mess up their lives. They just don't plan not to. I mean, I've never had a person come in to me, you know, for some pastoral care, some pastoral uh, counseling, or what I call pastoral advisement. I've never had them come in and proudly say, hey, hey, pastor, look how I've messed up my life. It's so messed up, just like I planned it. I mean, I, a long time ago, I said, man, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to get into drugs, and then I'm going to do alcohol, and then I'm going to get married and divorced three times, and, and then I'm going to, you know, cheat on my spouse, and I'm going to steal money from my company, get fired. I'm even going to go spend some time in prison. This has is, is been awesome. I, mean, I can't tell you, I planned this all along. Never met that guy. Never met that lady. They came in and said, oh, this is how I messed up my life, just like I planned it. 
Instead, almost every time, it seems like it's the same story. You know, I, I made a choice. Back there, I made a choice. I'm really regretting that choice. I, I was definitely under temptation from the devil, and I definitely made the wrong choice and went the wrong way. And I, yeah, I, I can't even really figure out, looking back, how I got here. But I know this is not where I want to be. And again, I would say I have good news for you this morning. As long as you're still breathing, you can make a change. You can make a choice. And you can change the trail and the path that you're on. And let's just be honest and say that if we want to make it to the end of our life and the end of our trail in one piece, then we've got to choose the ways of the Lord. And I believe that over the next several weeks, His servant David is going to help us do that as we look at this thing about this sermon series about finding your way. We're going to find our way with the help of David, with the help of God's Word. We're going to find the way that honors God. And we're going to learn a lot about ourselves. But even more so, I think we're going to learn a lot about God. We're going to learn a lot about what He wants. And we're going to learn a lot about how we need to relate with Him. Because if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, I'm telling you this morning, you're on the wide trail. And it leads to death. And Jesus Christ came and died on a cross to get your attention, to show you God's love, so that you might choose a relationship with Him and to walk with Him all of your days. Psalm 16, verse 11 says, You make known to me the path of life. I love it that we know the way. I love it that we can know the path to life. As a child growing up, my dad was a pilot for many of my uh, growing up years, and, and he, that's like how we made a living was dad was a pilot. I remember a lot of things about flying and doing that kind of stuff. But I remember something that, that dad did that I thought was really cool. That, but if dad got a call and he was supposed to go fly someone some, somewhere, uh, he, would call, he would have to make a call before he left the house. Um, it was called a flight plan. And he had to kind of have a plan. You had to know where you're at, you know, in a municipal you know, Woodring Municipal Airport, and you had to know where you're going. You know, where you go to Wiley Post in Oklahoma City, or going to Dallas, Fort Worth, or Will Rogers, wherever he was going to fly into. And what you had to do is you had to get on the phone, you had to make a phone call to this thing called the FAA. Anybody know what the FAA is? Federal Aviation Administration. And so you got on the phone with this, this you know, place in the government called the FAA, and you told them your plan. You told them your flight plan. You said, okay, hey, you know, in about 45 minutes, I'm wanting to be leaving um, Enid Woodring Municipal Airport. And, and I remember Dad would give his, give his call sign out for the plane, 7 9 or Papa X Ray. I'm going to be leaving Enid Municipal Woodring Airport, heading to Wiley Post in Oklahoma City, approximately this time. And I remember the FAA would tell them some signs and give them some warnings, say, hey, the wind is at this many knots, which I don't know, I don't know how to measure wind in knots. I've never understood that, but you know, it wasn't miles prior. Just remember, it was knots. You've got to have a headwind at so many knots because you're heading south, and you need to watch this. And we really want you to fly uh, somewhere between 22,000 and 24,000 feet. Uh, that, that's where we need you to fly, so you don't hit other planes. And I'm thinking that this is a really good thing, right? The FAA, you call them, you tell them what you want to do, you tell them where you want to go, and they give you some directions and instructions. They kind of mark your way. Hey, fly at this altitude. Know that the wind's coming from this direction. Here's how fast it's going. Because what's the point? The point is to get there, right? <laughs> we don't want to die in the plane. We want to get there. And so this is part of the safety procedures before you even go out and fly. Is that you call the FAA, you call in a flight plan, and they'd know. They'd expect your plane to come. They'd expect your plane to make it up into the air and to hopefully reach its destination safely. I think a lot of us, we need to remember our flight plan as a Christian it's to walk in the ways of the Lord. And God, through His Word in the Bible, has told us, do this, watch out for the wind from this direction, and make sure you fly at this altitude, because if you don't, there's going to be pain, and there's going to be heartache, and there's going to be sorrow, and you're going to be broken. 
But the good news is we can always call in a new flight plan. We can choose a new trail in life, and you can change it today. And that's the challenge from God's Word this morning. Examine your trail. Are you moving toward God or are you moving away from Him? And let's choose to make that change today, to have a plan and to walk in the ways of the Lord. And as I said before, if you do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, that is your first step to getting on the trail that leads to eternal life. Please bow with me for a word of prayer. God, I, I pray these, these, in these next few min, minutes as we play this song, as we sing it together, God, that you would continue to do your mighty work in our hearts and in our minds. And God, for many of us here today, we would call ourselves a Christian. We would call ourselves a believer in you. We have, we've accepted you as our Savior and Lord. But God, maybe we're not walking in your ways. We've chosen our own path. We've we're going on our own trail, and we're on the wide road with everyone else, and we know it leads to destruction, and we, we're feeling convicted this morning by your Spirit, God, that it's time to change. I just pray for courage to reach out to someone to tell them about that, or God, for them to repent and just spend some time in prayer with you this morning to get their direction and their heart and their head right with you. And Lord, we know, Lord, we know that some, they, we're not even close. We, we've been far from you our whole life. We've never accepted you. We've never called you boss. We've never called you Lord. And God, this morning, I pray if there's any of, of those that are here this morning, Lord, that they take that step. They would come and talk to somebody about where you're leading them. But God, as you've done so many times before, I just pray in these next few minutes, have your Holy Spirit lead us and guide us into what we need to do, how we need to respond to your word this morning. And God, we love you. We thank you for being a God of second chances and for the grace to jump trails somewhere in the middle. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.